Exotic Gaming back with a video covering an issue with 7 Days to Die a lot of people have. Performance. It may be an early access game and these issues could be expected, but there are ways to mitigate some of the problems people may have. In this video, I'll put some of these solutions all together and give you some options as to how you can fix your game. Whether that's from constant crashing, FPS drops, or just freezing in general. If any of these solutions help you out, I would appreciate it if you left a like on the video and let me know what worked for you. And if you found something that I didn't mention, please leave it down below as well so we can help out others who may have problems with their game. First up, you want to make sure your game is on an SSD hard drive. This has been proven to help the game with loading and even FPS issues. It should speed up the load times when dying or spawning into your world, and in my experience it also improved world generation. It just makes the game feel more responsive in general. Important to note with all of this though is to make sure your game and your world saves are both on this SSD drive. A common mistake people have been making is moving the game over, but then forgetting to move over the world saves themselves. Make sure you move over both. Another mistake that could be made with these SSD drives is not putting them into the right USB slot on your computer. If it's an external hard drive, make sure you put the USB slot into the most modern one on your computer. Usually these are blue or red in color. The next tip is to turn on XMP on your computer's memory in BIOS, if that's an option for you. Believe it or not, 7 Days to Die isn't really taxing on a graphics card, at least not right now. And that's especially true if yours is somewhat modern. It's a really CPU and memory intensive game. If you're having issues with your game, always check out your stats in the task manager or something similar when it comes to analyzing hardware. This will give you a basic idea of what is being used the heaviest while you're playing. I would recommend doing this testing while in cities and when zombies are spawning. You could also test it out while doing quests from the trader or something similar. That should give you a nice baseline for the heaviest CPU interactions in the game. Now we get into some game settings that have helped players out the most. Obviously when you mess with these settings in the game you're going to be missing out on some graphical flair of the world so I'll start with the least game altering ones. SS reflections off, reflections off, sunshaft off, bloom off, and terrain quality medium. Try out these settings first before messing with anything else because you probably won't even notice that some of these are off. I would run around a little bit in the cities and such and see how much your performance has improved or not improved. If it hasn't, then I would suggest switching over to these next settings. Grass distance medium, object quality medium, and finally, sadly, view distance near. Once again, go around and test your performance and see if anything has gotten better. Hopefully it has, but if it still has not, then we can move on to some of the more intensive fixes people have come up with. Before doing anything further though, I would suggest backing up your game or saves just in case. These next tips have been floating around the internet and have helped a lot of people, but as always you can run a risk of messing something up trying to fix it. What we have here is a boot config tweak for the game in the game file. Once you're in the files, open up the 7 days to die data folder and go into the boot config file itself using notepad or something similar. Change all the text in there with what you see here. Make sure you save it and then close out and start your game. Apparently this fix won't work if your game is an exclusive full screen, so make sure you aren't. To revert back to the old boot config files, just verify your game. Continuing on our journey to fix the game, someone managed to fix their FPS issues by turning off the dynamic music. Now I know that dynamic weather can cause issues for some people, but perhaps the music could fix your problems as well. Just turn it off for a horde night and see what happens. You could also try turning off dynamic mesh, which is supposed to help take the load off your CPU as well. I would however recommend changing these one at a time and testing them out so you know which one is causing you issues. Always try to problem solve by fixing one thing at a time if you can. Now turn off your V-Sync. This should make the game look like it is performing better. There should be less stuttering and more consistent frames. Or at the very least it will appear so. I noticed personally this was the one that affected me the most. Now let's get into some basic computer stuff that could be limiting your game. 
Go into your power settings and make sure you're not on power saver mode. This will kill your game, especially if you're on a laptop or something like that. I would recommend going on high performance mode or even ultimate performance mode. Next, go into your graphics settings by searching it in the little toolbar, should be on the bottom left, and make sure you have hardware accelerated GPU scheduling on. Not every graphics card will have this, so don't be shocked if the setting isn't there for you. After all that, let's get into the graphics card itself that you want to use. Right click on your desktop background and maneuver down towards the card you want to use. Now I'm not sure if this is how it works for every graphics card, but this is how I access mine. I like to use this when I feel like my graphics card isn't doing enough work or I feel like my computer isn't letting my graphics card do what I want it to do. You can go in here and manually force it to do what you want. This came more so in handy for me when I had a laptop than anything else, but it could work on your desktop as well. If you're still having issues with your game, I'd recommend setting your max frames to 60 and maybe going into your power settings here and making sure high performance is preferred again. You could also go through and double check that the settings you changed in the game earlier are application controlled and not controlled through here. Or you could just override everything and, and change all the settings that you wish through this instead. Okay, so finally we've gone through all the basics you could do to enhance your game that are pretty simple fixes, but at the end of the day, you could just overclock your CPU as well. This game is limited in the amount of cores on your CPU that it will use, so overclocking the cores themselves would probably be the best bet. Now I would suggest you look into this yourself for your CPU to see what would work best for you because you could damage your computer. What I do is I use a program called MSI Afterburner and I just up my memory clock to about 800 to 900 and that seems to increase my FPS by about 5 or 10 frames depending on what I'm doing. As I mentioned before this game causes no issues for my graphics card at all and it usually runs below 38 degrees Celsius. I will say if you're going to take the risk of overclocking your CPU for the game, make sure you monitor your temperatures for everything that you can. I do this through the MSI Afterburner, but you could use whatever program you want as long as it can detect each CPU's temperature. As I mentioned at the beginning, please leave in the comments any other tips you guys might have to help people out with their performance. I know a lot of people might not be running this on a modern graphics card, so please help them out if you can tried to mention a lot of the popular settings that cause people problems and with the xbox update hopefully coming out this summer this should increase performance across the board for everybody else as well because the game now needs to be compatible on older systems specifically rendering through windows in big cities should be fixed to help reduce performance lag for a lot of people if you found any of these tips helpful, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. I try to come out with pretty common updates on what's going on with the game, and I'm currently working on a 100 days supercut for it as well.